Hello and a very warm welcome to you to the Court House, your law class 101, where we get to learn the law together in plain, simple and entertaining language. Yes, it is about you and the law. This week we have something very, very interesting. We're going to be looking at the plight of casual workers. Do they have any support whatsoever in terms of legal backing? We'll be finding out when we return from this quick break. Stay with us. From Lagos to London, from Johannesburg for several years, our economy to the United States, identifying houses of worship. We have all the world covered for you, no matter where you are. Love with news is at the heart of it all. I have experience. We bring you our perspectives of stories behind the story. The signs given to us for the entry of these things are before us. Join us. Join us. Join us on this stage. You're welcome back. Well, if you just joined us, this is The Courthouse and I'm Ito Hanolomo Agbodo. And this week, we're taking a look at the plight of casual workers. Who are casual workers? What are they? Um, how do we find them in the society? Are they uh, readily or easily recognizable? We'll be knowing much about this in this discussion. And we're joined, as usual, by a seasoned legal practitioner who is Don Akebo. <music> Don, you're welcome to the courthouse. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. My pleasure to be here. Yeah, it's actually been a while. We've had you on other programs, maybe via um, live call and all that, but it's good to actually see you in person. Lovely, yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, now, so my first question is, who are these casual workers? Who are, are, who are those defined or, or termed casual workers in the society? Well, um, um, there is no standard definition for who a casual worker is, but um, they are workers who are engaged on intermittent or part-time basis. They are not described as uh, permanent workers. Um, they are usually engaged on hourly, daily, weekly basis, or whenever work is available. They are at times referred to as um, contingent workers, um, dispensable workers, non-standard workers, non-permanent workers, and so on. Okay, you, you just call them um, dispensable yes. workers. Oh, very well, yes. Um, and now, a lot of youths in, in the society, particularly looking at um, this, this region, Nigeria, some mm. of them feel that they are not employed for uh, so-called lucrative jobs. They are only deemed um, useful in terms of um, maybe casual uh, jobs, jobs that they just uh, pay them on a day-to-day -day basis. They are not permanent. So these people are casual workers. Yes. Okay, so why do you feel that some youths feel that way? Is that perception actually right? Is there any basis whatsoever for them to have that notion of themselves? Well, um they are called casual workers because they are treated like casual workers, right? Mm. Because we have labor laws. The terms and condition of standard employment are encapsulated in our labor laws. And our labor status at the moment has made no provision covering the status of casual workers. That's the reason why they are actually called casual workers. So these workers are treated as casual workers because their status is not ad adequately captured in our labor laws. Okay, so what, what does the labor law say about these people and do they have any sort of backing at all in terms of um, protection in the law? Do they have any, do, they, do these casual workers actually, do they even sign contracts at all? <laughs> That's the funniest part of it. Um, at the moment, casualization of 
workers is outlawed in our labor mm -hmm. act you know our labor act casualization of workers beyond three months is actually illegal right but like i said our labor laws they didn't capture the status of casual workers in the sense that they don't have the privileges accorded to permanent workers. And that, what, that is what makes it illegal because that state of affair is not sup supposed to continue beyond three months. Okay. When it goes beyond three months, it is illegal. Okay, so now you, you've just talked about the fact that even the Labor Act makes provisions for um, these workers they shouldn't be deemed casual workers beyond three months. Yes. So what would now qualify them ordinarily in the eyes of the law to, to now be permanent workers? Is there any provision for the law to make sure that these uh, employers of labor make these casual, these supposed casual workers, now make them permanent workers before the end of that three months? Is there anything that would impose this um, uh, duty on the employers? There is, at the moment, no such thing. You see, maybe we should start looking at it from the angle of why, maybe the factors that are responsible for this casualization of, of, of workers. Okay. Yes. One of which is the employer's um, desire to cut down cost and maximize profit. profit. The employer's desire to be free from the incidents or liabilities attached to permanent workers' um, master-servant relationship, mm -hmm. as encapsulated in our labor laws. Like, you can just wake up one day and say you have sacked a worker. You must give such worker um, um, notice or salary in lieu of notice. Mm -hmm. Permanent workers have some entitlements, entitlements and, and benefits, benefits like pension benefits, um, health, pay, benefits health, health insurance, leave, and, leave um, and, and, and the rest of them. Casual workers are, in, are so engaged because they are not giving these benefits. They are not giving these benefits because the employer of labor wants to cut down cost and does not want um, unnecessary um, the hazards of law, hazards of law and the rest of them. them. The rest of them. Okay. So basically, it is the desire to cut down cost and maximize profit, you know, that has given room for this um, state of affair. Okay, now looking at the, the youths, especially in the South-South region, yes. where we have um, lots of multinational companies, yes. oil companies and the like, a lot of them, end up being casual workers. Mm. And we know that they've not really found it funny over the years. Some of them even believe, as in they go to school, they study and get qualifications to give them uh, proper positions in these companies, yet they are still deemed good enough only for casual work. What do you say to When them? you ask some employers of labor, they will say, well, these youths are, are, are giving minor jobs. Mm. But from my experience, what you call menial job is only in terms of the amount of money this kind of work this set of workers are paid not in terms of the size of work, work that they do that they do mm. they are the real workers mm. right mm. but they are foisted a situation of take it or leave it because of um, um the economic uh, realities of our, of our country right it's a situation of take it or leave it that is foisted on them these graduates in in normal circumstances ought not to be left as casuals beyond three months right mm. but when you ask some of them they will say well half bread is, is, is better is, than half bread is better than none yeah so the, the, the applied is terrible but then they say half bread is better than none so these factors of course um, um economic uh, whether like i said um um, resulting from weak economy and um, corruption. Yeah. Because in my own view, there is actually no basis for casualization of, of workers in Nigeria. No matter the type of job that no they do. No matter the type of job that they do, because God has blessed this, this country enough 
to go beyond this situation. Mm. Okay, so now looking at this situation now, you just talked about the, the issue of um, the economic realities that we find ourselves in some parts of the world. But the world has actually been going through a lot of um, economic hiccups recently. And yes. with the, the COVID fiasco and all that played out, we saw some um, companies, a lot of companies globally cutting down on staff, um, apart from even casual workers, apart from casual workers, permanent regular workers, workers. regular workers are even told to go, giving notice to, uh, to, to resign or terminate their uh, employment and things like that. So how, how, do, how does the labor law protect these class of workers in a time like this? Because some of them would hide on the fact that, oh, it's beyond our control. We didn't see this coming. We don't know um, how it happened, but basically we are bankrupt. They could even file for bankruptcy. So how does the law protect workers <clears throat> in this category? Well, in this side of the world, it is said that the master can hire or and fire. fire. Mm. But there is a law that prescribes how you disengage a worker. You must give such worker notice as prescribed both in the labor law and employer employee handbook, which is a contract between the worker and the employer. Mm. But I'm aware that even some regular workers are being told to leave because yeah. of economic realities mm. at the moment. That is illegal because Section 20 of our Labor Act has made elaborate provision on what we call redundancy. Yes. Redundancy is involuntary, involuntary loss of job occasioned by um, excess of manpower. That's what redundancy is under the law. So when you ask a worker to leave, he is entitled to redundancy pay. Hmm. So it's entitled to redundancy pay. Yes, you, you must negotiate with the worker and pay such worker redundancy pay. Okay. That's number one. Mm -hmm. Before you even get to the stage of payment, the law says in Section 20 of the Labor Act that you must confer with the labor union that such worker belongs to. You must let them know the reason for the redundancy and the extent of such redundancy. Mm -hmm. Then you go ahead to negotiate redundancy package for such worker. But I'm aware that some persons are told to leave and they go away because of their ignorance of the law. Okay, now that you are telling us this, some of these workers, yes. we have the, the Nigerian Labor Congress yes. in Nigeria, we have the Trade Union Congress, we yes. have other labor bodies that should be protecting uh, workers in times like this, but all of them, um, they initially made comments about the fact that the lockdown would affect uh, people adversely, affect the economy adversely. Even the International Labor Organization came out to make some comments about the fact that um, about six to ten of workers are basically casual workers and they'll be affected mm -hmm. by uh, the global lockdown and things like that. These workers, you just talked about the fact that a lot of them are, no, are, are ignorant, mm -hmm. but they have unions that should be representing them. How well have these unions actually fed in terms of representing their workers? Because most of the time we just see them on paper, we don't get to f uh, feel their impact. <laughs> I wouldn't like to get into another, another I wouldn't want to digress. Okay. In my own humble view, the Nigerian Labor Congress and their leaders are actually there to become popular, negotiate with um, government, government establishments, mm. make their money, and step out at the expiration of their tenure. Mm. Mm. Just like your, our country, I'm of the humble view, I can say it anywhere, anytime, that our elected officials never get there to protect the economic or Whatever rights of, of whatever interest of the, of the, the of the citizens mm. they are there for their own selfish personal gains the it is actually is supposed to be the place of the labor um unions to file actions but you see i have a lot of workers a group of them 10 of them 20 of them they just come to me personally asking 
our law firm to prosecute their case. Mm. And often, oftentimes they don't have money to, 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 to pay. That is supposed to be the work or the job of the labor, labor, union. labor union. But I must give it to the, to the labor union anyway, um, Nigerian Labor Congress, that um, they have been doing something about the plight of casual workers. They have been fighting, but they have not been able to succeed. We, we hope that um, the fight, we see the results of that fight, because what most of these workers need now, they need the assurance that their jobs are secure. And that's what we're talking about this, this week. We're looking at the plight of casual workers, especially with the econo uh, economic realities on ground at the moment, and if they have any legal backing to actually seek redress. And our, our legal panelists have been telling us about the fact that the law actually provides that a casual worker should not remain casual in the sense of the word for more than three months. And of course, that people being laid off, they have the right to redundancy pay. And of course, we'll be finding out more of the, the rights of these casual workers and other types of workers based on the economic realities that the world generally is facing at the moment. But we have a report for you. We'll be right back after this. The phrase casual worker is often used to describe workers who are not part of the permanent workforce, but who supply services on an irregular or flexible basis, often to meet a fluctuating demand for work. The concept of casual employment is riddled with ambiguity and paradoxes. Making sense of them is the key to understanding the significance, especially for labor productivity and casualization. Definitional ambiguity reflects changes in the form rather than substance of long-term employment relations in the workplace. Decisions about casual employment are recruitment decisions made at the firm level. Recruitment research suggests that firms' recruitment practices tend to be ad hoc, firm-specific, and institutionalized. With the global economic crisis arising from the lockdown, employers are now more than ever imposing inhumane policies on their workers. Some time ago, the National Assembly passed a legislation criminalizing the casualization of workers. Under the Labor Act, workers should not remain in their casual status for more than three months. Yeah, welcome back. This is still the courthouse and we are taking a look at the plight of casual workers and workers generally, especially with the present economic reality globally. And uh, we still have Don Akebo, a legal practitioner based in Nigeria, who's been talking about some of these issues. And now he'll be elaborating on some of these rights that casual workers actually have. Uh, casual workers have more rights than they actually know of. Yes. Right. Yes. So tell us a bit more about this the right all right the basic one is that casual workers in as much as they they work more and earn less mm. they are at least entitled to their wages under the law mm -hmm. you can withhold their wages beyond the month beyond the month beyond the month wow good to know good these casual workers are also entitled to safe work environment, environment. Mm -hmm. like um the provision of um safety gadgets and paraphernalia under the law. These casual workers are also entitled to their freedom from dehumanization, freedom from discrimination and embarrassment. Which is also a fundamental human yes, right. Yes, fundamental rights, mm. yes. You know, from dignity, I mean, right of their respect and um, dignity. dignity of their human person as enshrined in section 42 of our constitution. These casual workers um, 
pursuant to the provision of Employee Compensation Act are so also entitled to compensation in the event of disability mm. or even death. You know, disability packages where a worker has been injured in the course of his job so or loses his life, they are entitled to compensation, mm. you know, pursuant to the provisions of um, um, Employee Compensation Act. Um, these workers, these casual workers, are also entitled to their right to unionize. Mm. Casual workers as well? Yes. Mm. They're entitled to their right to unionize, which is where I want to, you know, elaborate more on. on. This is because it is a constitutional right, the right to freedom of association, association. right? And uh, Section 1 of the Trade Union Act also includes casual workers as those entitled to to unionize. But in practice, in practice, and in most places, these employers of labor would give what we call a um, yellow dog contract. Hmm. What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> yellow dog contract is a compulsory undertaking by these workers to undertake that they will not participate in union, union activities. activities. Okay. Okay, because that is very common. We don't even see casual workers um, belonging to any union yes. at the end of the day. But you see, pursuant to Section 40 of our Constitution, Section 1 of the Trade Union Act, and um, various um, ILO, that is International Labor, Labor Organization, Organization conventions, conventions, like yes. that of 1951, 1958, they are actually against um, discrimination of workers and prohibiting them from, from participating in, collective in bargaining efforts, very well. Yes. Now, they are also entitled to unionize pursuant to decided cases by a national industrial court of Nigeria. There are several decided cases to that effect that casual workers are entitled to unionize. But like I said, they are meant to, they are, they are, they are forced to sign yellow dog contract prohibiting them from participating in union activities. So you can see that this constitutional right is observed in breach. Mm. And again, because um, their take home pay cannot even take, um, take, them, take home, them home, let alone engaging lawyers to, 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 to seek redress in court, mm. they, they, they stay with the condition foisted on them yeah. by, by the employers. When you started, you made a distinction between menial jobs and casual workers. Mm. The fact that someone is engaged in a, it's a casual worker doesn't mean that the person actually carries out a menial job. Yes. And the fact that um, someone actually carries out a menial job doesn't really mean that he's a casual worker. Yes. Okay. So now looking at the fact that um, most of the time, like you said, the take, -up, the take home pay of these casual workers doesn't even take them home. Mm -hmm. It's so uh, minute. Looking at these issues, um, just opposing it with the current realities that um, the global lockdown foisted on us. How do we now pursue the rights of these uh, casual workers? Do they have any rights? How do they seek redress? I know as a fact that um, the National Assembly, before the lockdown, has made a law yes. criminalizing casualization of workers. Casualization of workers before, even before now, has been illegal. Because like I said, it can, you cannot sustain such kind of employment beyond three months. The moment it goes beyond three months, it becomes illegal. That's even before the new law. So I am of the view, I'm, I'm, I'm of the belief that um, um, casual workers will now begin to go to court. Criminalizing it means you can prosecute your, the, the employer. So looking at the fact that you mentioned earlier that um, they are casual, they, the pay of casual workers and most workers generally, their yes. pay can't even take them home. Mm. How, do, <clears throat> how do they now secure um, the services of legal practitioners like yourself when um, briefs, as in it, it's not easy to, for them to just go and get um, lawyers like that to represent them? It is important that Nigerians, indigent Nigerians, get to know from platforms such as this that they can file actions in court whether or not they have money. 
there are many lawyers who can provide such services for indigent citizens for free, mm. like our law firm. Mm. We have the Legal Aid Council. In Lagos, we have Office of the Public Defender. Defender. It is just for the, for the people to know that there are places they can go to secure the services of seasoned legal practitioners without necessarily paying, mm. right? Yeah. So this, this, um, this set of people should look for where to get the services of lawyers. You know, right, these days we are meant to provide pro bono services. And that's free services. Free services, pro bono publico. And legal aid council is also there. People need to know these places so that they don't die in silence. So thank you for, for letting us know that we have um, agencies like this that the government has actually provided to provide free legal services to citizens and of course the legal aid councils and um, people like yourself that can also render free legal services. But just final words on this um, issue that um, some workers, they have to slash their salaries due to the, the prevalence of um, lockdown and the, the, the total economic collapse globally. A lot of uh, workers had to go home with less pay, some with no pay. You talked about redundancy fee, yes, but what about telling me, take half of my salary or leave it? Just some thoughts on that. That, is, that is negotiation of redundancy pay we're talking about. It must be negotiated. You cannot foist it on them. But if it's foisted on them... You can, you can go to court because it's where there is... Right, there There's is a, a remedy. remedy. But you, you'd be out of a job at that time. Of course. <laughs> okay, so that's quite interesting. But you've mentioned some uh, Latin maxims, and of course, we like to end by just saying one or two um, words or jargons in, in Latin. So what Latin maxim do you have for us today? I would say ubi juice. You be remedium. You be remedium. <laughs> Where there is right, there must be remedy. All right. And you mentioned pro bono publica. Yes. Okay, so let me stick with that. Pro bono means free legal services, free legal services to the public if you're adding the publica. Yes. Well, you get to find out more Latin maxims in our bar book segment. Well, thank you so much, Donna Cable, for making out time to be with us on the courthouse this week. My pleasure. Okay, thank we'll you. also, you know, you, you started this discussion. It's going to bring a lot of um, other discussions in terms of uh, workers' um, rights and things like that, yes. even though we've talked about them before. Yes. And um, we recently also talked about the National Industrial Court and the fact that it's the court that adjudicates some matters pertaining to labor yes. and workers. So would also like to see you some other time to elaborate, to do elaborate to and do justice like you yes, said. Yes. Well, that's much you can take this week on the courthouse. We would like you to download our app, Lover Plus. We'd also like you to use our hashtag, hashtag the courthouse, hashtag Lover Plus to send your comments. And of course, we have numbers I'll be showing you on screen now that you can send comments to. We want you to also send questions to us. We have free legal uh, services for you. Let me stick with that free legal services. <laughs> so we'd like you to send your questions because we have legal experts that would uh, willingly provide answers to those questions that you will be bringing in. And um, Ito Hanoluma Agodo, like I always tell you, don't just get mad. Go get a lawyer. Sure. Bye for now. <laughs>